Hi friends, Jessica here, and today on Spuds and Scones, we are not doing any old boring scone. We are doing one of the most unique scones I guarantee you'll ever have, and that is dark chocolate and orange scones. So let's get started. All right, let's get started on our dry ingredients. So we've got three cups of all-purpose flour here, a third cup of sugar, it's good old white granulated sugar. It's gonna melt beautifully into our scones. And we've got two tablespoons of baking powder here for our leavening agent and a half teaspoon of good old table salt. And give that a nice whisk. Perfect. Okay, we've got that all incorporated. Now for the fat content of our scones, which is delicious unsalted butter. All right, we've got eight tablespoons here or one stick. And we're gonna make sure that it's very, very cold. Even if you have it frozen, that's even better, but just very cold butter. We're gonna cut that into cubes. Okay, our butter is all nice and diced. Cut in about half inch cubes here. And if you don't have one of these, I highly recommend if you do any sort of baking with scones, biscuits, anything like that, where you don't want the heat of your hands to warm up the butter in your dough, I would highly suggest getting a pastry blender. If you don't, totally fine, two knives would work great. But the keys, we just don't want the heat of our hands to get into our scone dough. So, plus I always feel kind of cool with this. Like, I'm tough in the kitchen. <laughs> okay, we're going to blend this butter into the dry ingredients. If you want to put a number on it, I would say about 50 strokes. What you want to see is pea-sized gravel is what I like to call it, the butter. So what will happen is when you see the butter in the dry ingredients, when it bakes in the oven, it's going to expand. That's what's going to get you a little bit of rise to your scone make it extra delicious. Okay, our butter is cut into our dry mixture beautifully. Now for the stars of the show, we've got some dark chocolate here. It's about 150 grams or about a cup of chopped dark chocolate chunks. If you've had a stressful day, this is a wonderful exercise. All right, our chocolate is looking beautiful, nice and chopped. What I love about using the bar too is you get kind of like the flakes and you get the big chunks. So in every bite, it's just a little bit different. Hey, and if you're liking this recipe, be sure to like and subscribe to our channel so you never miss a video. And for the orange part of our chocolate and orange scones, we've got one large orange. We're gonna do the zest of here. It adds so much fragrance. So you've got the dark chocolate that's not too sweet. Got the fresh orange zest that's super concentrated. It's an amazing combination that might be slightly unusual, something you've never had before, but believe me, it's one of my favorites. And it's one of my sister's favorites. We actually joke and coin the term Sarah Jane scones for these. <laughs> and it's my sister's name. So shout out to you, big sister. This one's for you. All right, we've got that zest of one large orange. And as you see here, I didn't let it go too far. That's called the pith. You don't want to get into the white part of the orange. That'll make your scones bitter. So just stick to the zest like this and you are good to go. Okay, our orange is zested here. We are well on our way. Just gonna give this a stir. Make sure it's all well incorporated. You can smell that orange zest. It's smelling beautiful. All right, onto our wet ingredients. We've got two large eggs that I've cracked into a separate bowl. We don't want a double yolk situation if you've had that before, I know I have, or any shells in the eggs. So, got this, and we have one cup of whole milk that adds perfect amount of richness. We don't want skim milk that won't add enough fat, and we don't want half and half. I find whole milk has just the right amount of fat. We're gonna pour our eggs into our milk, and we're gonna give it a nice whisk. Okay, our wet ingredients are nicely whisked together. We're going to reserve two or three tablespoons of our wet mixture. What we're gonna use that for is our egg wash to make our scones nice and golden brown. All right, and next up, we are going to make a well in our dry ingredients. Just got a spatula here. Again, the key is not to warm up our ingredients. And what the well is going to do is it's going to allow us to fold our wet mixture into our dry. Because with scones or any quick bread, the key is not over mixing your dough. You overmix it, it's gonna be that tough hockey puck type scone that we've all had at a bakery or two, and we're like, this is not a scone. This is a scone. <laughs> all right. Wet ingredients into our well. Beautiful. What we're gonna do is fold the dry into the wet until it's just combined. You're going to see a little bit of flour, a little bit of the butter. 
that it's completely fine when we turn out the dough onto our surface, it's gonna all come together. So again, the key is not over mixing our dough. So we're gonna turn out our scone dough. And as I said before, having a little bit of flour, totally fine. We're just gonna have this come together. All right, our scone dough is nicely turned onto our surface. If you find your hands are a little sticky, I just add a little bit of flour and we'll get into it. Now what we want is about an eight or a nine inch circle of dough. You have a, one of those silicone pastry mats. I use that in some of our videos. Today we're using this lovely board, which I'm gonna link in the description. And basically what you want is, again, for the dough to just come together. If it's a little bit sticky, that's perfect. I'm just gonna turn it a few times. There's no need to knead the dough, <laughs> so you don't see a rolling pin here. Your two hands are just fine. All right, this is a touch sticky, and it's always gonna vary whenever you do it, so I'm just gonna add a little bit more flour. Beautiful. Pat it out. These are nice, thick, big, fat scones. As I always say, if you're gonna have a pastry, have a pastry, so we're gonna make a nice, fat scone. Right, I've got our scone dough all here ready to go, and I've got a three inch scone cutter that I've dipped in flour. So when we push these down and make our six big scones, that it's gonna come out nice and clean. So we're gonna stamp out six scones. All right, we wanna push this down in one swoop, I like to say, if we twist it, that's gonna cause our scones to flatten in the oven. So we're not disturbing the butter, we're not disturbing any of the ingredients, we're saying, hey, you guys stick together, we're gonna push this down. It's going to be great. Okay, four of these beauties are done. So when you have a little bit left, we just want to bring the dough back together. Flour your hands a little bit more if you'd like. Okay, and again, minimal handling. And we're going to cut out the other two. Right, we've got our six scones all shaped out. I'm gonna put these onto a parchment lined baking sheet and then we're gonna pop these into the fridge for 10 to 15 minutes to ensure that our scone dough is nice and chilled. That's gonna result in a nice high scone. Right, it's been 10 to 15 minutes. Our scones are nice and chilled out of the fridge. One more little step. I'm going to add our reserved egg wash from earlier. Give that a nice brush. I'm using a silicone pastry brush. If you don't have that, you just use your two fingers, that's totally fine. But I will link to this pastry brush as well. This is one I cannot live without. <laughs> Our egg wash is nice and brushed over. The tops of the scones is going to make them nice and golden brown when they're in the oven. All right, now for the moment we've all been waiting for, we're going to get these in a preheated 425 degree oven for about 15 to 16 minutes until it's nice and golden brown on top and the bottom. All right, our scones are smelling amazing. They're just out of the oven. We're gonna transfer these to cool on a baking rack for 10 to 15 minutes. Okay, our scones are out of the oven. They've been cooling for 10 to 15 minutes, closer to the 10 minutes because I cannot wait. <laughs> We're gonna get this. Cut it down the middle and make sure we cut it this way. The British, including me, will scoff if you do it this way because <laughs> we have to have room to put butter on it. All right. Oh, beautiful. It smells incredible. We've got the dark chocolate and the orange zest running throughout. And I would say this is one of the best scones I think you'll ever make. And if you love this video, be sure to look up here for more scone videos and we will see you in the next recipe. This is Jessica from Spuds and Scones. Thank you.